Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of All Spans. I'm your host, Boy. Happy Friday to everybody. In today's video, we're going to be updating you on how the summer workouts has been going for our team. Several players are starting to recreate their bodies heading into fall camp and heading into the season. I think that it's going to be paying dividends for us on the field. We also have to update you on our big board for recruiting in the 2025 class as of today's date, July the 12th. And as always, y'all, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Big, big shout out, as always, to all the members and everyone that's been donating or sending us tips to this channel. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. It is helping us out tremendously. And if you would like to help support this channel as well, you can become a member by clicking that join button just below this video. And you will get access to exclusive content that we can't share on the regular side of YouTube. Also, if you would like to donate to this channel, the best way to do that is by scanning the Cash App QR code with your smartphone in the top right hand corner of this video. You can donate as little as a dollar. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank y'all so much for everything that y'all been doing, all of the support. It's huge, it's major. Even just liking, commenting, all of that sharing, that's huge to us. And, you know, again, thank you, thank you so much. All right, so before we get into the main video, I want to bring up a very important and very serious topic. UGA's culture with the football team down in Athens. There's been 21 or so major traffic violations and incidents down in Athens with the football team over the past 18 months. And it's resulted, unfortunately, in a few deaths and also 19 to 18 arrests, uh, you know, of UGA players, uh, staff members, things like that. So I would definitely say that it's a culture problem, but at the same time, that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as what's going on down there in Athens. And if you don't believe me, you can do a quick Google search of UGA football players arrested. You may have to sift through several pages, but you'll see what I'm talking about there. And it's something that's so bad that we can't even talk about it on this channel. Um, and I'm not talking about traffic violations. So just know that there are a lot more uh, things that has just not really come out. For some reason, it's been suppressed from the national media. And whenever you look at this stuff, you know, it reminds me a lot of Urban Meyer's Florida teams back in the day. We see in hindsight all the crazy things that was going on, and it resulted in several tragedies. I would say the UGA is on par in some areas, definitely worse than what was going on, at least what we know was going on down there uh, in Gainesville with the, with the Florida Gators up under Urban Myers. So I say this right here, right now, okay? Kirby Smart has got to do a much better job of controlling his team. Now, I know that he said, and several other people have come out saying that, well, we've seen that Kirby Smart and UGA has done a good job of bringing people in to talk to the team, and you know they're punishing these guys. Well, whatever they're doing, it's not enough, okay? Like, they need to have a much higher sense of urgency to help these young student athletes and other people, right? Like just other citizens of Athens to, you know, be more protected than what they are right now. Because at this point, the football team, not all of them, I'm not going to say all of them, but there are some that are wreaking havoc on the city of Athens on a pretty consistent basis. So something needs to be done. It starts with Kirby Smart. After that, what's the AD doing? Why isn't he sending out some punishments to Kirby Smart to entice him or to, you know, really get him to stop this culture in Athens. Also, what's the president of the University of Georgia doing? But even outside of that, I could look at Greg Sankey and the SEC. I could look at the NCAA. Listen, if they're going to be doing investigations on teams and programs for giving a kid a hamburger and a hot dog, things like that, and then punishing those schools for it, you damn sure can punish a team and a program for this sort of a culture where it's resulting in arrest and death and other things as well. Everyone that I just mentioned, they need to do something. I think that if the NCAA wants to stay relevant, then that's the best way to do it. Stop trying to go after people for, you know, helping these kids out. Go after the people that are actually creating environments that's harming these young men and women's, uh, you know, futures. You know, it's harming their mindset. You're grooming these people to be less than productive citizens, okay? They are menaces to society. So I just feel like no one cares about these kids. All they care about is making money and winning championships. But I think that more than that, they need to start worrying about their freedom because there's things going on down there in Athens on such a consistent basis that I feel like the FBI could get involved and do a real investigation and a whole lot of heads will roll. I mean, we're talking about prison time for some of the things that, you know, maybe they're covering up or that they are, I don't know if I would necessarily say enabling, but to some degree, they have to be enabling it if they're covering some of the stuff up. Now, some of it is going to be speculation, okay? So I'm just going to say allegedly for everything, all right? So allegedly covering things up, um, you know, allegedly enabling, but it's going on, right? Allegedly. It is allegedly going on, and something needs to be done, and it's just, it's sad to see that no one is willing to step up to the plate and enforce anything 
to stop that culture down in Athens. And I have no idea why anybody would send their child to play for Kirby Smart, would send their child or, you know, whatever loved one to work for Kirby Smart. Uh, he's just a total greaseball. I feel like UGA kind of sold their soul to get to the point that they're at right now. Um, and that's why I just don't really have a whole lot of respect for Kirby. Never really had a whole lot of respect for Urban Meyer. Are they good, solid football coaches? Yes. You know, I would say that Urban Meyer is probably a better football coach than Kirby is. But whenever people try to compare Kirby and UGA to Nick Saban in Alabama, as much as I don't like them, the truth is you didn't see these sorts of incidents on this sort of a level at Alabama up under Saban. He ran, you know, for the most part, a pretty clean program, you know, as far as these things go. We all know that, you know, some things were probably happening, uh, you know, as far as cheating is concerned. But, you know, none of these sorts of things. So I just, I don't have, uh, you know, I don't really have any respect for the entire program down there uh, at the University of Georgia. I'm starting to lose respect for the SEC and for the NCAA as well, just because no one's doing any, anything to stop it and something does need to be done. But that's going to be it for my rant. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it, though, down in the comment section. Let's move on to the rest of the video. All right, so summer size update. I got this from utsports.com. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below because this is not the entire team, but there are other players that have recreated their bodies. We're just going to highlight some of these guys right here. Uh, starting off with Nico Iamalayava, he is listed at six foot six, 215 pounds. That's about where I feel like he was at, uh, maybe like in spring. And hopefully, maybe he can gain a little bit more weight before the season actually kicks off. After that, we've got Boo Carter. He's listed at 5'11", 195 pounds. I think he was about 180-ish in spring, so that's great. It looks like he's going to be ready to contribute for our volunteers in the secondary and also on special teams, close to 200 pounds. We also have Jacoby Thomas, 6'2", 200 pounds. That's the transfer safety from Middle Tennessee State. I believe that he was at about 190-ish, something like that, but that's good that he is picking up the weight. Hopefully, he could be a starter for us this season. Tyree Wesby, this is a big one, 6'5", 272 pounds. Now, we talked before in a video like a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, we kind of showed the depth of our defensive line, and I had him at about 6'5", 260-ish pounds, something like that. But I said, I think that he may have gained some weight. That's beautiful size for a strong side D, and I think that he will be the starter because he has gained that weight. Expect for him to be absolutely dominant and to wreak a lot of havoc out there on Saturdays. He's going to be a stud, man. I'm very excited to see what he does uh, in fall camp. Then we also have Caleb Herring. Look at this, six foot five, almost 250 pounds. Now, this is a guy that came in at like 215 pounds, something like that. You want to talk about recreating your body over like a year and a half? I mean, beautiful, beautiful job. And I, he's another one. I really expect Planet Leo to contribute. He might actually be our biggest Leo now. So to go from being one of the smaller guys to one of the bigger guys, I love to see that. And then up under him, we have David Hobbs, who's now six foot four, 300 pounds. Before he was at about 285, 290. So that's great. And keep in mind, y'all, all of these weights that they're gaining or losing, it's going to be really, really good weight. Uh, it's going to be, you know, good strength, all that. It's not going to be a whole lot of fat because over summer workouts, all you're doing is running, uh, you know, lifting and eating and whatever your, uh, you know, body weight that the staff wants you to be at, you're kind of shooting towards that. But what we're talking about here is just gaining a whole lot of muscle. So expect for the players not only to be faster with this added muscle, but to also be stronger and more explosive and a lot more confident. So I love that so far. Now, Omar Norman Lott, six foot three, 315 pounds. I think that he was playing last season somewhere around 290 pounds. So that's huge for him to be, uh, you know, a defensive tackle body. I always said, man, it seems like he might be a little bit light for that position. But what I love is that he was so quick twitch that it didn't really matter. He was able to wreak havoc just with his speed alone. Uh, but also, man, he gets a really good push. He's very strong. Same thing that we just talked about, y'all. He's added about 15 pounds, and he's going to be even stronger. I, feel, I expect him to be even more explosive. That D-line is going to be, I believe, even more dominant than we initially thought, maybe heading into this whole thing. And then we have Keenan Pilly, who dropped down. Okay, he's at six foot three, 242 pounds. I don't know exactly what his weight was before, maybe 245, maybe a little bit closer to like 250. But I love the fact that really all of our linebackers that we're going to go through right here, Arion Carter and Jeremiah T. Lander, they're cutting weight. And we've talked about it a lot last season. Some of our guys, especially AC uh, and JT, they looked too slow because they had gained too much weight. But there's been a point of emphasis in playing with speed. I think that that's going to be huge because they're still at really good sizes to play linebacker in the SEC, but they're also going to be a lot more explosive and look a lot better out in space. So we see the Ariana Carter is down to 234 and Jeremiah T. Lander is down to 238. I'm expecting for that trio to have a phenomenal year, y'all. Very excited about it. Now, next, we have Mike Matthews at 6'1", 
about 200 pounds, 197, I believe that he was at about 180 whenever he uh, arrived on campus. But another one, man, that you would expect he's gonna have a really big season. And now, you know, again, bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be a baller this year. Now we have Chaz Nimrod. I don't know if this was a typo or not, but listed at six foot three, 220 pounds. If that's the case, I mean, we're talking about another Bruce McCoy type, right? Because if you watch his film, he looks very, very explosive. But you add that size to him now, all of a sudden, where maybe he couldn't make people miss, he's going to be able to run through those tackles. And he's going to make people not want to tackle him, especially secondary pieces. So if that's the truth, that's huge. I think that he's going to see a lot more playing time than we had thought before uh, if he's anywhere near that size. Now we also have Khalifa Keith. He's now at 6'1", about 240 pounds, playing at running back. Last season, he was at about 230. And we did expect for him to gain a little bit of weight. I hope that this is all good weight for him. And if it is, yes, he should most definitely be able to move those piles in short yardage. And hopefully he's you know, still kind of kept some of that quick twitch, some of that straight line speed, still a little bit shifty. Once he gets up to the second level, now all of a sudden maybe he can you know, hit, some, hit, hit a home run or two. I think that, that would be great. But let's go ahead and move on to our big board of recruiting in 2025. All right, so we have the players that we are expecting to commit to our volunteers on the left. And I would say for everyone, maybe I'll start at David Sanders. I'm at about a 95% or higher that they're going to be Coming on home to Tennessee with David Sanders, I'd say I'm at about an 85%. And then to the right, we have the players that are possible commits. And y'all can see that the Sam Brame is back on this list. No, that's not a typo. He is actually here. We'll talk about him in just a minute. And also to the right of each player, you can see their updated player ratings with on three. And I'll tell you if the players that moved up or down or stayed the same uh, with the new updates. For most of them, it's just going to be like a hundredth of a point or a few hundredths of a point, something like that. It's not a major uh, you know, increase or decrease for really anybody. Now, starting off at the top with our expected commits, we have David Sanders. We all know he's the best or the highest red offensive of lineman in this class. It's been us in Ohio State for a while. I feel like maybe Ohio State has closed the gap just to taste, but I still feel very confident that he's going to be coming on home to Tennessee because our insiders feel very confident about it, and they usually don't miss. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can bring him on home. He's still set to announce on August the 27th, but at the end of this month, you know, once the dead period ends, around the 25th, 26th, or 27th, he is expected to maybe visit some of these schools and programs that he has in his top four. And again, it's us, Ohio State, Nebraska, it, I think, is actually in third. And then it's UGA. So we'll see who he visits. I feel like that will tell us a lot about who he's very serious about. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can kind of, you know, uh, just remind him of why he wanted to come to Tennessee in the first place. Uh, you know, at the at the end of the day. But yeah, that would be huge. And his rating did not go up or go down. It stayed the exact same. The next player is Travis Smith, four-star wide receiver from Westlake High School here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and his rating actually went down by like a hundredth of a point, right? So did not go down by much. He's pretty much is the exact same player, according to On3. And he's set to announce tomorrow. We don't have a time lined up for that just yet. But once we get a time, we will, bring, we will be bringing that to the channel. We are going live with that. So we hope that everyone will join us. Right now, it's us, maybe Alabama, maybe Georgia. He's kind of flipped back and forth between is it Tennessee and Alabama or is it Tennessee and Georgia? But the one constant has been Tennessee. We've seen several RPMs and all that coming in for him to choose Tennessee. Feel great about this one. I think that he may have already silently committed, but you never know until it's all said and done. Next, we have uh, Shady Hayward, who actually went up, okay? He was before at a 92.84. Now he's at a 93.12. Uh, you know, four-star safety from South Georgia, and we feel good about him, too. Think that he may also be silently committed. He is set to announce, I believe, on July the 27th. So that should all still be intact. That would be huge. We could add him to this class. It's because he's so versatile. He could play safety or he could play linebacker. So we'll see what happens with that one here uh, in a few weeks. Now we have four-star linebacker, Jaden Pilati. I know that y'all want to know how much he went up or down. He was at a 92.4, um, you know, with, and, you know, again, all of this is from on three's industry rankings and ratings. But he was at a 92.4. Now he's gone down to a 91.26. I think he took the biggest drop or, you know, whatever. He had the most movement out of any of the players that we're going to be talking about today. But excellent linebacker, okay? Absolutely outstanding. We all know that Charles Power is a joke. You know, a lot of those people over there at On3, I would say, I'm not going to say everybody, but some of the guys that are doing the, you know, rankings and ratings, kind of a joke. But definitely our insiders at On3 over there at VolQuest, we love them. They do a phenomenal job. So I don't want to paint a bad picture of all of on three, but yes, yeah, some of those guys are definitely bad apples. But anyway, Jaden Pilati, we are expecting that he will be choosing our volunteers flipping from UGA. That's big. We just talked about, you know, what, four of these guys really UGA was fighting for really hard. 
But Jaden is one that's been committed to UGA for a very long time. So flipping him, that would just be another way to kind of stick it to them daggum dogs. Now the next guy also is going to be choosing between us and UGA, another four-star linebacker, Christian Gass. Uh, and he was at an 80, uh, let me see, where was he at? He was at a 90.05, and he moved up to a 90.88. So he's a really good linebacker. You know, he reminds me a lot of Jaden. I think that he's more of a first and second level guy, whereas Jaden is an all three level sort of a guy. But looks like we could be adding both of these players. Our insiders feel very confident about Christian Gass. He's set to announce on July the 20th. We'll see what happens with that one. Now we have Onus Conan Vanny, who went from an 89.48 to an 89.42. We're expecting that he's going to be announcing at some point in the middle of August, maybe like around August the 15th is what I've been hearing. But four-star cornerback, great size, great length. I think that he would be a, a huge addition to this class. Um, you know, I think that he is a true cornerback. I don't think he's a guy that you would want to necessarily move to safety. I just think the cornerback fits his skill set. The same thing that I said about a Tyler Redman. That's two very long cornerbacks that I think, uh, you know, we're, are going to be studs for this team moving forward. Now, let's just say that we add everyone that we're expecting to add. This class would uh, have a 90.7 overall average rating of all of our players, which I feel like would put us anywhere from six to eight, according to on three's industry rankings. So obviously that looks really, really good. Now let's talk about the players that are possible commitments. Josh Petty, not a whole lot has changed here. It sounds like it's, um, you know, Florida State probably as the front runner. They probably have a little bit more of a lead at this point. Um, and then it sounds like maybe Georgia Tech and maybe our volunteers are at number two. But, you know, I can't really call that. Stanford sounds like they have a good outside in sort of a shot. Probably going to be announcing at the end of this month, like we talked about before, he's on a trip to Poland or something like that. So once he comes back, he is expected to be announcing. Um, and I believe that he stayed the same. Let's see. He went from a 95.99 to a 95.98, uh, according to On3's ratings. And now we have Desan Brain, who went from a 93.03 to a 93.10. So he actually went up. And all this we know was after he chose Oregon. Now, he's up here because he was actually silently committed to our volunteers. He's a guy that said that he was coming. And at the final hour, Oregon made him a huge NIL deal. And he just couldn't turn that down. But it sounds like he's kind of reconsidering that because it doesn't sound like he, I mean, it's not that he doesn't want to play for Oregon, but he really wanted to come and play at Tennessee. So he's starting to kind of weigh out, okay, you know, I could be very happy, make good money still and play at Tennessee where I really want to be. Or, you know, I could make all this money, be maybe a little bit more miserable, kind of be away from my girlfriend. We talked about his girlfriend is going to be playing soccer for our volunteers. And so I think that there's a lot of things for him to still kind of mull over. So this is one that could that could go all the way down to signing day. But the insiders are expecting that he will be coming up for an unofficial visit to see a game at some point in the fall. So probably not going to see a whole lot of movement with that too early on, you know, like not very soon. But at some point in the season, we could see him flip to our volunteers and obviously if we could add him all of a sudden this class could end up being top five now after that we have Juan gaston who was set to announce i believe august the second or third um and that's between us uga and oregon really more i would say oregon and uga but we all know that georgia's signed a whole lot of offensive linemen does that deter him from wanting to go and play for them it most definitely could and he's one's been keeping it so close to the best that the insiders and experts don't have a real feel for it they're just pretty much you know i would say educated guessing that he's going to be going on to UGA. But I still think that Oregon might be the favorite just because there's going to be a better chance for him to play earlier. And he's also going to make a whole lot more money if he goes up there. And he also grew up as an Oregon fan. So I'd just be happy if he doesn't go to UGA because anytime that they take a hit, players don't want to go there. We all know that that's good for our volunteers. Next, we have DJ Miller. And I'm not quite sure if he is still going to be on our list necessarily, especially because we're probably going to be getting Travis Smith but if we don't get Travis Smith, I would say that he's going to be a guy, three-star uh, wide receiver, very similar body type to a Travis Smith. Um, and his grades, his rating stayed the exact same. I did not talk about Juan Gaston, but that was a very small move right there. He went from a 91.55 to a 91.54. Um, and then the last player that we have up here is Dewane Morris. His rating stayed the exact same. We're expecting that he will be visiting our volunteers at the end of this month, as soon as that dead period ends and he's a guy that's very versatile we talked about him before he could play running back for us he would be a smaller body guy but he could also play you know in a slot a multitude of different positions he's just an athlete he's from tennessee currently committed to usc he's probably going to be flipping and staying closer to home probably wants to play in the sec probably wants to see most of his nil money you cannot blame him for that we have several big announcements coming up this month for our volunteers and we hope that y'all will join us for every single one of them starting off with travis smith tomorrow 
once he does set a time and all that type of stuff, we will let y'all know uh, on the channel somewhere. And we hope that y'all will join us for that one for sure. And uh, man, I think that this class is shaping up really, really nice. I know that some people have kind of been down. You know, we talked about maybe being top five doesn't look like that's going to happen. But I'll take, you know, a top eight sort of a class, especially with the way that we put it together. The staff is doing a phenomenal job. We know now for sure, if we didn't know before, to take all these ratings and rankings with a grain of salt. It's just too much politics at play uh, when it comes to this stuff. But thank y'all so much for sticking all the way to the end. Please leave y'all's thoughts down in the comments section. And as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. We'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.